Hey guys, what's going on? So today I have an hour review for Brodekin's Methods of Execution. Uh, background, we're listening to Deeds of Flesh's Market Legion. Uh, just got this recently, it was one of my birthday presents. I, my 18th birthday was last week. Um, I'll do a collection update. At some point I have some stuff coming, some stuff I want to order first. So, last Brodekin review. Um, their third and the most recent album from, I think this came out like 2004. They haven't released anything since. I don't know if they ever broke up, but I know that they they really only play live now. Um, a lot of people say this is their favorite, and uh, I can see why this might be my favorite, but I think I think Festival of Death is probably my favorite, honestly, but this one fucking rules. Um, the, the wall of sound isn't as thick on here. This is definitely the most thin sounding Brodigan album. Uh, it's not quite as chunky sounding as the first two albums, but this one is really like, almost kind of acrobatic sounding. This is definitely the fastest one. And there's a lot of just really adrenaline pumping moments on here. Uh, the songwriting is actually really good on this album. So uh, I cannot tell for the life of me what's going on in this album cover. Um, there's the back. I'll take out the booklet and try to make more sense of it. Uh, but yeah, you got their like medieval type stuff in the background. Um, but yeah, it looks like this is a uh, enhanced E because you have the music video for Slaves to the Pyre. That's probably the best song on here, honestly. Uh, the first song, Slaves to the Pyre. But, uh, Brodekin just got more and more raw and extreme with each album, and this one is pretty much the logical conclusion from after, um, <clears throat> Festival of Death. This one is just ridiculous. It's definitely their fastest. I mean, it's so fast, it's hard to make up the blast beats. The production's really noisy, really extreme on here. I forgot to mention, put out their own ads for Tality, obviously. They're owned by Brodekin. You have, like, a little card for what looks like each song here. I'm taking a good look at it, to be honest. Picture of the band, of course, they're three-piece. I don't even know if they've even, I don't even think they've ever had any lineup changes. So anyways, um, the riffs on here are kind of discernible. Um, maybe even a little more than on the previous two albums, but the guitar tone is a lot more thin on here. Um, it's less chunky like on, uh, it's not as chunky like on the first album. Um, Instruments of Torture and Tanada is like it's louder in the mix than on Festival of Death but it's more thin sounding they, they stuck with that guitar tone with like Liturgy as well which was a side project that's basically brought it in with uh, Maddie Way from Discord and god knows how many other bands on vocals legendary vocalist of course and if you like brought it in, I highly recommend Liturgy not the shitty hipstery black metal band um the brutal death metal band that's pretty much just brought it in with Matty Way. Uh, so there's a lot of really cool fucking buildups on this album, like the song Slave to the Pier. Um, there's like patterns between this kind of gallopy beat and then gravity blast, or like really quick blast beats and this little break that eventually build up to gravity blasts and it just feels so climatic and like energizing, it's awesome. It makes you want to fucking like move around really fast. Uh, the Gridiron, or Gridiron, I don't know how you pronounce it. That song has some really memorable riffs. They're really catchy and kind of grindy. This is probably the grindiest uh, Brodekin album. Um, there isn't really that many of like the chuggy riffs on here, but they're still there occasionally. But really, this is mostly just a fast, ridiculous album. Oh, I forgot to show. So the album cover, it looks like a, it looks like some sort of body if you could kind of make it out like I could make out like a, a head and arms and legs there's like a head right there maybe it's like some shitty CGI I really cannot tell um, it's such a weird album cover but it doesn't it's not a bad album cover I just think it's kind of memorable I don't think it's as good as the first two album covers but yeah uh, the vocals are probably some of the best in Brodick on here the vocals are a little louder in the mix and, uh, you know, they're the same as usual, those, like, inhale lows, or at least they sound like inhales to me. But they just sound particularly morbid on this album. Um, the outro track, uh, I think it's just the title track, Methods of Execution, is, uh, fantastic. It, it starts out with a lot of, like, samples of, like, talking and stuff, but it builds up to this really unique-sounding, like, atmospheric, melodic part that almost sounds like something you'd hear in, like, a black metal album. It's weird. Uh, I think that's a really fantastic and really unique outro. You never really hear anything like that on a real death metal album. Um, yeah, every song I hear is great. I can't say that a ton of them stick out. 
uh, past like the first two songs. Those are the most memorable. But if you want, I mean, like with all Brodigan's albums, if you want 30 minutes of just ridiculous blast beats, uh, crazy low vocals, uh, really fast tremolo pit guitars, and really uh, scooped mids, you know, uh, you can't really go wrong with this. I mean, it's not for everybody, and I get why people don't like, why some people don't like Brodigan. But this is just ridiculously extreme and really fun to listen to. Um, and yeah, if you really memorize how the songs go, there's just moments on this album that really get your adrenaline pumping. Uh, that are just so over the top and ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, Slaves to the Pyre, if you, if you want to know what this whole album is like, listen to that song. There's a music video for it. Uh, it's just a killer song. Really fast, really crazy riffs. Not ridiculously technical, there's some like slightly technical flair, but they're not as technical as a band like Gorgasm or Defeat Sanity or Disgorge. Um, you know, they have a lot of grindcore influence, so there's a lot of tremolo picked simple riffs, but there's there's still some of those single note um, kind of chuggy fast riffs, but not as many on here as there are on the other two albums. Um, I can't think of much else to say. I'd give this album probably a 9 out of 10. Um, the only thing that I'd say is lacking from here is the production's a lot more thin than the other two. There's not a huge wall of sound, because, I mean, Festival of Death was my favorite because of how ridiculous the wall of sound on, is on there. Whereas this one is more thin but muddy sounding. It's still killer, like, raw production. It's really cool sounding for sure. It's just not quite as overwhelming. It's more, like I said, it's more nimble sounding. It's more just fast and all over the place. Uh, is the best way I could describe this album. You know, there's not a ton of low end or really high end. It's just very thin sounding, um, which doesn't sound very appetizing, but it works for the way the material is on here. Uh, it would probably sound very overbearing if they had more of a wall of sound type of production because the songs on here are extremely ridiculous as it is. But yeah, I'd say this is probably a 9 out of 10. Brodkin's Methods of Execution. Uh, fantastic album. Probably my second favorite for them. I don't know. I'll have to think about it a little more, but I'll do an Albums Ranked video soon with all three other albums. So uh, yeah, but uh, that's it for this video though. I hope you guys enjoyed. Write to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.